Welcome in. It is Big Ten today. It's great to have you with us on this Tuesday. Dave Refs and Dave Wanstead. It's Thanksgiving week. It's a chance to gather with those we care about the most. And then for football fans, it's a chance then to watch your team play against the people you care about the least. It is. Uh, perhaps. Right. We, <laughs> well, you talked about the rivalries, and we got some great ones we're going yeah. to talk about here. But, uh, you know, everybody would like to focus on the big game, on the game. Yes. And, uh, I just know this, that coaches look forward to this week, players look forward to fans, and most importantly, you and I do, Rever. This is a week that we've, we've got Ed circled on our calendar, and it's worked out perfectly with both teams doing what they have to do to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the, the biggest game this year in the Big Ten <clears throat> and the one we have been pointing at for the entire season is Ohio State and Michigan, our big story Looking at that rivalry matchup, it'll mark just the fourth time this century college football has seen a matchup between two teams with records of 11 and 0 or better. Three of those games have come in the regular season. They have all featured the Buckeyes and Wolverines. This, of course, the second straight year that we have seen it. The only time it happened with teams other than these two was the SEC title game 14 years ago. We are going to take you out to Columbus in just a bit, and we'll listen in on some of Ryan Day's Good. news conference. You talk about coaches looking forward to the week. Do you look forward to it with excitement? Do you look forward to it with a little bit of anxiety and dread? What's the mindset of a coach? Well, if I'm undefeated, uh, it's exciting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, no, but in all seriousness, you know, I, we talk about Ryan Day. When, when I look at Ohio State, from a football standpoint, they have overcome. Ryan's done a fabulous job of overcoming a lot of football hurdles, as I call them. Yeah. You know, starting with your opener. When you're, when you're going to open up against Notre Dame on the road, and that's leading up all summer, that's a lot on your football team and your coaches. And then, obviously, we had a quarterback, a little bit of a, right, a, not controversy, but a debate early with Devin Brown, right, right. And, and, and McCourt. So uh, they've accomplished, they've accomplished a lot to get to this point. We'll get into it. That played through injuries as Absolutely. well and appear to be about the healthiest they've been all year, certainly the healthiest they've been in quite some time heading into this one. As promised, we're going to send you to Columbus now. Ryan Day addressing the media. Doing something? Yeah, um, I think that's, that's important. You have to play with emotion. You can't let emotion play with you. Um, I think that's important. You have to have your emotions in check, which isn't easy in a game like this because, uh, as we all know, how, how the, the magnitude of it all. Um, but it's something that you know, we identified in the offseason. So, um, and we'll talk about this week. Uh, Bill Landis, the podcast. Ryan, the, the way your run game has evolved this year just, just looks much better now than the last month than it did earlier. Um, what was the process like of, of kind of landing on the things that work best for you? And just generally, how do you feel about where you're at right now? Yeah. Um, Going to keep getting tested, um, and you know, but I feel like we've made some progress um, in different areas. I, I think certainly Trey coming back has made a big impact on that. But um, you know, everybody uh, is involved with it. Um, you know, and it's balance. Um, but I think you know, identifying each week what's uh, worked for us and what hasn't. You know, and fixing those things just over time, getting better. I think the infusion of Trey has certainly helped. Tony Gurman, Buckeye Hubble. Ryan, given some of the backstory with J.J. McCarthy and Kyle McCord and the recruitment that went on there, how do you keep Kyle from trying to prove you right in this game? Well, I think there's a lot going on here, and I think what we've done all season is uh, in preparation for this game, uh, the way that we've prepared, the way we've uh, evaluated each game, the way we've talked about each game, our focus in the offseason, our focus – um, in the preseason and our focus during the season. So, um, you know, like I told the guys um, on Sunday, we've been preparing for this moment all year. And so now we just need to continue on the routines that we've been on um, and, you know, be the best team we've been all season, but at the same time focusing on those things. And it'll be the same for, for Kyle. Pat Murphy, 24 7 Sports. Ryan, when do you think? you really grasp the magnitude of this game? I know mean, you can hear about it from the outside and, and maybe even the first couple of times you are experience it, it's a big game. But when, when did you really understand what this game, game means to Ohio State? Monday? I think every year you just learn more and more. Um, I guess that this will be my sixth time in the game. So um, yeah, you, you learn quickly when you're here. But um, each year, um, 
you know, you you learn more and it has more of a significant impact on on you as a as a person. And um, and you know, I think all of our guys when they come here, whether it's a coach or a player, you know, they're here for one reason to win that game. And so, um, you know, and I guess you know, every year that you're here, you learn you learn about that more and more. Um, but you know, shoot, my youngest daughter doesn't know any other place other than Ohio. So. Um, yeah, this this world means the the world to me and my family. Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Uh, McCarthy, uh, McCord thing, but when you obviously when you guys are recruiting quarterbacks, you're looking at multiple people and you're evaluating that. When you're trying to decide who's in the hierarchy on the board and whatnot, are there certain things that you're looking for that maybe separate one guy from another guy? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not just one thing, but there's a lot that you look at. Um, you know, leadership, competitiveness, toughness. You know, there's just so many things that you you do. Um, and and the, you know the difficult thing now is we're recruiting, starting recruiting at, at younger ages, and um, you know certain guys are being evaluated as you know freshmen and sophomores, and then you continue to evaluate. Then you have guys like uh, Lincoln who you know we evaluated his senior year. So, and and then you try to compare the best you can. Um, and but but there's not you know one thing other than you know uh, competitiveness is one that for sure is high on the list. I just to follow up Kyle and JJ. What, when you, what do you remember about recruiting JJ, and what was it about Kyle that ultimately led you to him? Um, you know, there's, um, there's all kinds of things that lead, lead into recruiting. And um, no, I mean, you know, JJ was always great. He was very respectful. He was a um, you know, very competitive player and um, you know, got a lot of respect for him as a player and as a person. And, um, you know, and, you know, during the recruiting um, you know, cycle, you know, you just, you spend time with different people and different folks and you learn about people. And, um, uh, again, my, all my uh, interactions with he and his family were, um, you know, very classy. Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com. Kind of go back to that the concept of the intensity. And I know you've done a good job of, of avoiding uh, all the other questions we've had about the way that this year's game has been changed. But how is that not personal for you and for the staff this year? And how, have, I guess, you just personally try to put those feelings aside, whatever might be going on there, um, and focus on the task. Yeah, because I think, um, not, not that it's easy, but the only thing that matters is this game, is this team, is preparing. The rest of it um, doesn't matter. So that's what we have to do. We have got to stay disciplined enough to focus on that. And it goes back to the, the conversation about emotion, you know, letting you know emotion of the game and everything get in the way. We can't do that. And every year you learn more and more about this game and, and the preparation for it. So um, we're not going to let any of that stuff get in our way in terms of distractions. We're just going to focus on this team, this season, and preparing the best we possibly can. Austin Moore, podcast. Ryan, this is an outside observation, so I don't know if you'll agree with it or not. But going into the game last year, it, you just seemed pretty uptight to me. And that was very different when you went into the Peach Bowl. I don't, I don't know if you've notice the difference if that's something you can control consciously if that's just the pressure of the game I, I don't know but if the team takes the cue from you is that something that's on your mind and did you did you notice a difference for those two games a year ago um you know I think every year you evaluate what's going on and you try to do the best you can to make sure that um, you fix the things that that don't go well and you enhance the things that do go well um you know, I think there was a lot of things that that went on um you know in the game looking back on it and so um, you learn from it and you move on. Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, the fact that Kyle has, has played in a top 10 game at the time at Notre Dame and, and gone through the experience of a tight competitive game against Big Ten, what, what experience did you learn about him from that moment and, and how can that help him Saturday, obviously? Yeah, anytime you have experience in a game like this, it makes a big difference and it's something to go back upon, which is good. Um, he's a very smart player who um, you know understands situations and when uh, you've been in um, type, those type of situations before, you have something to grab onto and r refer to and you have a reference point. And I think that all helps in preparation. Did you learn something or take away something from that, from seeing him go through that? Yeah, just, just watching him play and, and, and you know, doing it and learning about you know, the things that um, he you know, excelled at. Clay Hall, WSYX. Seems like this rivalry was built on respect even in the 10-year war, at the heart of it, Woody and Bo respected each other. Because of what's happened, this investigation, uh, it doesn't seem like that now. Does that sadden you, or does it energize you? 
I think, you know, I was taught that, you know, the way you respect the rivalry is to work it every day. And um, whether it's in the, um, you know, the weight room, whether it's, you know, uh, game planning, um, you know, talking to your players, um, you know, periods and practice in the, you know, during the spring periods and practice in the preseason. And, um, and, and that's it. And so, you know, we do, we respect the rivalry and, and, um, you know, certainly excited to play here on Saturday. Ryan, you referred to your team as road warriors points this year. Uh, is there something special about this team going on the road more times than any team you know, at Ohio State in a long time and getting it done and, and to have this one be on the road? Is there something a little bit special about that? Even though, I know you guys love playing in the shoe, but it seems like the road has been kind of friendly. Well, yeah, and, and you know we have the schedule right over there, and I, I point to you know all those white um, you know blocks right there, the teams we knew we had to go on the road this season more than we had in the past. And certainly knew we had to go on the road for this one. So, um, like I said before, it's all in preparation uh, for the for the last game of the year. And so it's been great to to get tested, to get battle tested. Um, so again, you talk about like you know reference point. You know our, our team does have a reference reference point. It'll be loud. It'll be uh, you know hostile, great environment. Uh, but we've been in those before. And so again, a reference point going into the game is important. How important is it to have success in the running game in this game, considering the way that this rivalry has played out over the last two decades? It's extremely important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, there's a lot of things that are important, but that's certainly that's extremely high on the list. Cameron Teague Robinson, the Athletic. Ryan, Michigan's obviously had a pretty, really good defense, especially in the red zone. How do you? What's it take to execute at an extremely high level against defense like that? In, in well, first off, they haven't had very many snaps down there. <clears throat> so, um, you know, there's not a ton to go off of. Um, but, um, you know, you got to, you know, every yard is worth two or three down there. And, um, you know, you got to do a great job execution. You know, the field gets smaller. Um, you know, we call it the, the 12 defenders at end line. And so you just got to operate in a, in a smaller area. And so you got to be efficient. But uh, that'll be another situation that'll be huge in the game. You know, those four point plays where, you're the kick and field goals are scoring touchdowns on both sides of the ball. Rob Oller, Columbus Dispatch. Similar to Clay's question, this rivalry's been heated for over 100 years. It's very intense, but there's always been respect among players or between players, it seems like. Does that hold true for coaches? Do you, do you respect Jim Harbaugh and his staff, or what's the, what's the feel there? Yeah, I think, you know, with everything going on and the things, you know, that are out there, we just kind of stayed away from all the distractions we have, you know, and just focused on our team. And, and I think our guys have done a good job of it. You know, I think, um, you know, when you talk to our guys, you know, I have talked to them a couple of times about, you know, what's going on this season and, and um, you know, going into the game. But, you know, they're, they're focused on this, this game. They're focused on the season. They're focused on their preparation. And, and we're just going to continue on that. Coach, you give them a game plan, you work all week. On game day, how important is it, though, for them to go out there, play loose, play fast? What's, what's, what's the mission? Yeah, you? that's it. Um, you know, it's, it's our job to give them a good plan, let them go play. And, and you know, then they can go out there and, um, you know, compete at the highest level. And that, that's what you want as a coach. So, um, you know, we got to have a you know, good scheme. we got to do a great job with that. But at the same time, you know, we got to allow them to go play. And um, and that's that's what it comes down to in big games, and it's going to be four quarters. It's going to be a battle, and you know the good news is again this is something we've been preparing for all, all year. Uh, Adam King, WBNS. Your emotion on the sideline, and, and you know we've seen it every now and then. We saw it at Georgia. We saw it after the Notre Dame game. How do you pick and choose those spots, and, and how much do you think your emotional you know, state kind of impacts the team getting them hyped up? Yeah, I think you know you have to know your team. You have to know what your you know what's going on each week. Um, you know, sometimes it just pours out. Other times, you know, you feel like you got to give your guys a little something. Uh, but you also want consistency. Um, but uh, the, you know, the guys in the locker room know how competitive we all are and how competitive I am. Um, so, but like you said, you have to keep your emotions in check, and um, that's going to be you know starting from the head down. It's got to start from me. Um, you know, we have to go in there and execute at a high level um, and handle the environment. 
Going back to kind of what <clears throat> Dave was saying about the intensity of the game, um, that tunnel has turned into kind of a gladiator pit before. Have you had any talks about what you might do, how to handle that pregame to avoid something happening? Yeah, we, we've had conversations already. They've been, um, you know, folks have been talking about it here for a couple of weeks and put some good plans together, uh, again, to make sure that we can focus on what matters, and that's getting on the field and playing football. Brandon Gulick, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated. Coach, um, you know, you referenced the fact that you, you prepare for this game all the time. It's it's constantly part of your program. So how much do you reflect on your preparations for this game the week leading up to it in years past? Do things change? What's the vibe right now as you get ready for this game compared to where it was this week a year ago? Yeah, I think you look at um, that in the offseason for sure. You just dive in. You try to identify, okay, um, Let's talk about everything. Let's talk about the scheme. Let's talk about the preparation. Let's talk about, you know, leading up to the game. Let's talk about all of those things. And then you try to identify, so what, what exactly happened in the game? Um, and then you learn from there, and you grow from there, and you make adjustments from there. And, um, and then that's kind of how you shape your season. You're, you know, that's how you shape your offseason. And, and then you learn about your team. You know, you learn about, you know, th there's a lot of information that comes in during the season, and you grow from there, and you build from there. Um, you know, all in, all in preparation for this one. So, um, yeah, you certainly look at all those things. But at this point, you know, a lot of those decisions have been made. Uh, deep left, uh, Katie Capusta, Spectrum One. Ryan, with so much changing next year, this game might not have as much on the line. I guess, what do you relish about an opportunity like this, and what will you miss about something like this type of game? Yeah, I don't know if um, if that'll be the case. I'm sure that'll always be just as much on the line when, when these two teams play. Um, and you know certainly it'll be different, but you know I don't think uh, it'll change anything just on the format. You know it's always going to be this way, um, and you know the format certainly will change next year. But um, I don't think the rival will, will ever be uh, anything less than it is right now. Andy Andrews, Love the Warriors. Uh, yeah, just um, this feels like the ultimate test for the offensive line in terms of the progression they've made over the course of the season. Just. Where do you, where's your confidence level at with that group right now, and what are you seeing from them in preparation? For this? Yeah, you're seeing um, improvement every week. You're seeing a group that works together. You're seeing progressions, um, you know, individually and as a unit. Um, and so, you know, they're going to do a great job today of getting out there on a Tuesday practice and working at their craft and preparing to go play at a high level and, and then go compete for four quarters. But um, like you said, you know, week in and week out, you know, we come in, we talk about the progress in different areas. I think you've seen it in that area. So, um, you know, I think their, their confidence is as high as it's been all season. Far left, Jeff Gilbert, Press Pros. We heard from Ryan Day there. What stood out to you just about the mentality and, and what he was speaking about? Well, the thing that jumped out at me is he talked about making adjustments as, as the year progressed. And every coach says that, oh, yeah, we've been working on this and we're going to tweak this and adjust that. Well, you see it with Ohio State. In my mind, we've seen the run game, the offensive line, uh, the quarterback progression. So I think everything that he's saying, I mean, he's been focused every week. What do we got to get better at? And he's gotten it done. You're focusing there on the offense. So let's break this game down a little bit, starting when Ohio State's on offense against what is the nation's number one scoring defense in Michigan. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not going to be easy. I mean, Michigan has a lot of comp. You don't go in and play Penn State and not throw a pass and know that it's going to be a close game in the fourth quarter without having an unbelievable – I mean, I coached defense for 40 years. I don't know if I've ever had that kind of defense that, that's okay, let's just keep it a one three-point game and we'll stop them at the end. That's the kind of the confidence right now that this defense has without getting into all the numbers. And, and one thing, Ohio State, and, and Ryan Day said it, he made the comment that, you know, our run game has gotten better. And then at the end, he, he probably – I could just picture him saying, wait a minute. How much did we change our run game? One thing happened. Trey Henderson. <laughs> yes. When Trey got back, our run game became explosive. I mean, he makes, you, he makes me get out of my chair every time he touches the ball. Makes a huge difference, oh. no doubt, for Ohio State. And it does feel like we were talking before the show, too. You add in the fact that Emeka Abuka looked better against Minnesota than I've seen him look in quite some time. you got to deal with Cade Stover as well. We heard from him there, those sound bites. So, I mean, everyone knows about Marvin Harrison but you can't just focus on Marvin Harrison now. What's that task like for and Michigan, given the weapons now that Ohio State is boasting? Yeah, the matchup, you know, obviously, Will Johnson, the great corner from Michigan, are they going to match him up with Marvin Harrison, or how are they going to take away Marvin Harrison? And uh, in games like this, I remember we're getting ready for a national championship game. My second year coaching at Pitt, and Johnny Majors was a coach. 
And he walked in and he said, uh, let me tell you guys something, okay? He says, this game's not going to be about plays. It's going to be about players. Get the ball to Tony Dorsett. <laughs> and he walked out. <laughs> so I look at this and I say, get the ball to Marvin Harrison. You know, and he's going to be double covered. It's not going to look good sometimes, but give this great player a chance to go and make a play for you. Well, that is the challenge for Michigan, trying to slow him down. I mentioned they lead the nation in scoring defense. They lead the nation in total defense as well. Ohio State isn't far behind. They're number two in scoring defense. Wow. What about when Michigan has the ball against this Buckeyes defense? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off track just a hair because uh, when Michigan has the ball, I think this is the first game that Jim Harbaugh's absence is meaningful, hmm. more so than the others. Why? Your quarter, Jim's a quarterback. Nobody relates to the quarterback better than Jim does. And he's, he's, he's the coordinator. He's overseeing the play call, and however that works out. And I'll tell you what, this is a game now, and I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm getting off a little bit, but offensively, do we go for it or do we go for the field goal? Do we go for it and punt? It's one thing making those decisions against a lesser opponent knowing my defense got me covered or we can come back and win it in the fourth quarter. In a game like this, Jim Harbaugh is the head coach here, and he's successful for a reason. The guy's won college championships. He's won. He's been in Super Bowls. This guy is a big game coach. And uh, I, it, it, it concerns me a little bit because now, hey, J.J. McCarthy, you know, I mean, they, you know, the last couple of weeks they've kind of been slow moving a little bit, not real aggressive. He's going to have to be aggressive this game to keep up and score enough points to win. Last few games, McCarthy hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. Now, as you mentioned, they barely threw the ball against Penn State. So you almost feel like you discount that game. But he really did not play great right. last week against Maryland. So three straight weeks without a touchdown pass. Two of those were weeks that Jim Harbaugh wasn't on the sideline. Is that just coincidence? I mean, we have seen such a rapport with Harbaugh and J.J. I know you said kind of from a strategic, from a – game managing standpoint from like the big decisions that a head coach yep. has to make you feel his absence. Do you feel his absence there though as well from the rapport of the quarterback and the head coach? I think so. I, th I think you have a tendency to be a little bit more conservative when you're not the guy in a game like this that could be Big Ten championship playoffs, national championship, you're probably going to be a little bit more conservative than what the head coach would be if he was doing it. So I think it does have a factor. The positive is when you play Michigan, you be the defensive coordinator. Yes, we know about the skill guys, Wilson, Johnson, Loveland. I mean, they got plenty of talent that can make plays. But their quarterback, the edge that they got with J.J. McCarthy, he's a dual threat quarterback yeah. in my mind. Yes. I've got to defend his scrambling. I've got to defend a quarterback designed run in addition to his 75-plus percent yeah. completion ratio. So he, he, uh, he could make up for it, particularly playing at home uh, with the absence of Jim Harbaugh, even though I think it's going to be a factor in this game to some degree. I don't know how. This is the matchup, obviously, where the game was won last year. Michigan just overwhelmed Ohio State with a big place. Think about this, Wani. Five touchdown plays of 40 yards or longer yeah. for Michigan in that game last year. Ohio State hasn't given up a touchdown play of longer than 20 yards all year this Probably, year. Ohio State's defense is one of the best-kept secrets in college football, in my opinion. No one's talking about them, but they have been outstanding from week one to now. No doubt. Dramatically better than yep. they were a season ago, but this is the ultimate test. This game, and then if you get in the CFP, this is where they faltered last year. We'll see whether they can maintain it against a truly elite offense. Well, Saturday, Big Ten tailgate, getting you ready for a full day of football, including our doubleheader. First, Indiana colliding with Purdue. That's followed by Northwestern against Illinois and Maryland taking on Rutgers. Then the Terps hit the hardwood to battle South Alabama. And number one, Nebraska squares off with Minnesota in a volleyball showdown. It's all Saturday, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Friday, we got a top-ranked Nebraska looking to continue its undefeated season in a showdown with number five, Wisconsin. Then 13th-ranked Purdue faces Michigan. It's a women's volleyball doubleheader. Powered by Unleaded 88. It's coming your way Friday only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Our big stat is presented by Gatorade. Iowa is 9-2 and two heading into Friday's battle with Nebraska. It is the 10th nine-win season of Kirk Ferentz's 25-year tenure in Iowa City. 
Consider this for some perspective. Before Kirk took over for his mentor, Hayden Fry, Iowa had eight nine-win seasons all time. Six of them had been turned in by Fry. They get Nebraska in Lincoln on Friday. Huskers need a win to end their bowl drought here. Iowa trying to get to 10 wins and continue their momentum as they head into the Big Ten championship game. What are you watching here, Juan? Yeah, I, th I think the Nebraska run game, you know, one of the best in our conference, you know, at the top there. Uh, this will challenge Iowa because, and I say this because, yes, they, they go into the Big Ten championship. You can imagine the celebrations on campus and to play great defense, run defense wherever, you got to be all in emotionally to do that. And so I'm just going to be curious to see, hey, Nebraska needs it. You said for that bowl yep. game, they're going to run the ball. Will Iowa be emotionally ready for this challenge? Nebraska will need to do something it has not done since 2016 in order to get to a bowl game. That is beat a ranked team. It has been a long time since they have done it. We'll see whether they can pull it off against a Hawkeyes team that's lost only one of its last 18 November games. And that one, of course, was last year against Yep. Nebraska. Uh, also Friday, we got Michigan State. They are winners of two of three. They're playing a little bit better here as they take on Penn State. What interests you in this one? This game's going to be played in Detroit. Yeah, it'll be uh, – I, th I think this game will be uh – there's going to be a lot of emotion, as you mentioned, with, with Michigan State. They, you know, but, uh, but Penn State's playing for that 10-win season, right, yep. and a chance to be in a, uh, a New Year group of six bowl games, okay? So uh, this would be back-to-back 10-win -back seasons for James Franklin. Um, th that's a lot. That's something for these players that James can talk about all week, hang his hat on. And, and Michigan State, like you say, they're um, – it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, it's going to be very tough for them. I think they'll come out of the locker room. That staff up at Michigan State will have them prepared. But how long they can sustain it will be the key. They're the lowest scoring team in the Big Ten. We yeah. know how good Penn State is defensively. We were talking about Minnesota and Wisconsin even all time in the series. This one's even too. 18 wins apiece. All right, let's focus on Minnesota and Wisconsin. The Badgers got the win to guarantee that they will prolong the Big Ten's longest bowl streak. Got a win last week. Minnesota needs a win here to get into a bowl game. They have fared a lot better in the last couple of years against Wisconsin than they have in more recent history. What would it take for Minnesota to get a W here? Well, they're going to have to play in one phase up to the level that P.J. Fleck wants them to play at. By that, I mean they've turned the ball over. You know, at times they've struggled running the ball. Their defense has been up and down. I mean, this, their whole season has been very inconsistent from what we've seen since P.J. Fleck has been there. You know, so when I look at Minnesota, I say, well, what are they hanging their hat on now? They've been uh, hit and miss throwing it, hit and miss running it, and defense. Where on the other side, Tanner Mordecai, and when you get Breland Allen back, when those two guys were on the field, it's a shame that they were both hurt. Because when they're on the field for Wisconsin, in my opinion, Wisconsin takes it to another level. And uh, I assume that they're both going to play this week. If they do, they both have something to play for. I think this could be very difficult. And P.J. Fleck will have them ready. There's nobody that emotionally will get his team you know, ready to play quicker and, and more importantly than, than P.J. But I just don't know right now if they're playing with enough confidence, Trevor. I was really impressed by Braylon Allen last oh. week against Nebraska, even more so after hearing Luke Fickle talk about him after the game because Fickle said he didn't really think he'd be able to play. We saw him try to play very briefly the week before against Northwestern. It was obvious that he was really banged up. But, man, he gutted it out and had oh. some really important runs down by the goal line. Oh, absolutely. When he came in and I'm watching the game and, I'm, and I had to think to myself, he was hurt because yeah. it sure didn't look that way. I mean, they, uh, the kid did a great job, and he, he was a major factor in that win last week. Gophers looking to make it three straight wins over Wisconsin. They have not done that since 1984 yeah. through 87. Uh, we got three games on the Big Ten Network on Saturday. First, we've got Indiana and Purdue colliding for the Old Oak and Bucket. Then it's Northwestern and Illinois, the Land of Lincoln trophy on the line there. And the Terps and the Scarlet Knights all starts with Big Ten tailgate. Saturday, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Talking about Minnesota needing a win to get to a bowl game. Illinois is in the same predicament against Northwestern. The Wildcats have locked up a bowl. Illinois needs a win to get into a bowl. What are you watching most closely there? Well, I'm watching to see how Illinois responds. I mean, they should be the hungrier team. They're at home. Uh, they should win this football game. 
You know, I mean, they, uh, as great a job as what Northwestern's done, wow. I mean, every, I mean, how do, you're going to a bowl game. The, the, that campus had to be on fire this week. People excited. Your coach is coming back. I mean, you know, okay, guys, pull it back, pull it back. I mean, this this will be another hurdle, another step that David Braun, the head coach at Northwestern, that he has to put his arms around. Okay, it's one thing when we're the underdog. Guess what, guys? We're going to a bowl game. They're not. Okay, they're coming after us. They're the underdog. You know, now you got to get your football team ready to play at a high level. And, and this is a whole different challenge for him. It truly is than what he's faced the last three or four weeks. This is a series Northwestern owned for a while. They won six straight games. Illinois has won the last two. It really hasn't been particularly close either. Will be interesting to see Brett Bielema mentioned Caden Fagan out for the year mm. for Illinois. The freshman running back's been so good. Northwestern has shown itself vulnerable to the run. They're last in the Big Ten in rushing defense, so maybe Reggie Love can get it going. He was really good last couple times out for the Illini. Maryland and Rutgers, both these teams trying to take some momentum into the bowl season. They're both bowl-bound. What are you watching when these two get together in Piscataway? Well, this is for recruiting. I mean, that's the way I look at this game. I mean, both of these teams are, you know, with a train ride up and down uh, 95 there. I've taken it back in the day and uh, you know they're re- they're recruiting a lot of the same kids you know be- because of proximity so to me this is a game hey they both want to win they're looking for another notch but this is also one that uh, I think there'll be some recruiting battles and decisions made off of the winner of this game interesting it is uh, Rutgers team that has lost three in a row offense has really struggled here they've scored 22 points in that three game stretch they've scored six points combined in the last two games, we saw Maryland play pretty well defensively against Michigan. They gave them a hard time as a Maryland defense was really good early in the year. It struggled a little bit, but perhaps they've got a little bit of their mojo back now. Yeah, and Rutgers cannot afford to get into a shootout, right? I mean, if they're I'm not, not sure they're capable of getting into a shootout. They're yeah. not. Yeah. And, I, and the guy that knows that more than anybody is Greg Schiano. <laughs> so play defense and run it. Here you come. There's your game plan, uh, Maryland. Uh, Let's focus in on Purdue and Indiana. It's the bucket game. The Hoosiers, man, it's been frustrating Mm. here. They had the overtime loss and then another three-point loss last time out. We saw the frustration from Tom Allen last week, kind of throwing his headset. So two straight three-point losses now for this team. They get Purdue, and, and Purdue's probably played a little bit better than its record, but they're either really good or they're not. What, what are you watching here most closely with these two? Well, Ryan Walters in his first year, you know, he's he's still feeling his way, players, you know, the whole bit. Uh, Tom Allen, you mentioned it. Tom needs this win. There's a lot of pr- pressure on Tom right now. And Tom has been in this rivalry, obviously, competing for the uh, Oakham Bucket several years now. He's going to have his team ready. So I don't know how, but somehow, some way, Tom Allen, he'll be fired up. I hope the team is. Yeah. Okay, we know he will be fired up. And uh, he just needs this win, I think, just, just because of his, the coaching part and his job, to be honest with you. No, no doubt. Yeah, it's, it's been frustrating. I think they, certainly when we were there at camp, I think they felt like they'd be better than they have been. I will say this. Brendan Sorsby has really played well the last month. I mean, the, the offense has looked different under Rod Carey. It's just the W's haven't quite come here. I think the there's Hoosiers. a lesson there. You know, every, the grass is always greener. Or we can get this guy from tra- uh, from a transfer portal on this guy. Just take, coaches, take a good close look at the guys you have on your roster. You know more about your guys, pluses and minuses, than the guy you're going to get. There's a transfer portal QB we'll be watching in this one, though. It's Hudson Card. See whether or not he's good to go. Obviously, did your not guy. play last your week guy. against your Northwestern. Guy. You've yeah. been raving and talking about him I, since. I, I, I have been. I know. Tonight, don't miss the Hoops doubleheader as Maryland hosts UMBC. It's followed by Minnesota against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Coverage begins with the tip-off show tonight, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. It was a good night for the conference last night. Wisconsin, a 24-point win over number 24, Virginia. It was the largest margin of victory over a ranked team while unranked themselves in school history. 
Indiana topped Louisville 74-66. They closed the game on a 13-2 run as the Hoosiers captured third place in the Empire Classic at Madison Square Garden. Xavier Johnson leading the way with 14. And Purdue got 25 points, 14 boards, and three blocks from Zach Eady as they topped Gonzaga in their opener in the Maui Invitational. Lance Jones, a transfer from Southern Illinois, was great as well. 13 points, four rebounds, two steals, and an interview with Andy Katz. You know, we just came out really aggressive. Um, you know, we were down at the half. Uh, you know, we were missing a couple close bunnies at the rim um, and, you know, taking a lot of tough shots. Uh, and I feel like second half, we got a lot of deflections, uh, a lot of steals, and, you know, we got out in transition. And uh, as you can see, when we get out in transition, we're pretty dangerous. The additions of you, Miles Colvin, uh, you guys finished the game, yeah. played at the end. Yeah. In what way are you guys making an impact? Uh, you know, I feel like me personally, I made an impact, you know, kind of defensively. Um, you know, Miles, he missed his first shot or toward the end, uh, you know, Braden, you know, passed him a good pass. I told him to stay, stay ready, keep shooting it. Um, and, you know, he hit two big ones at the end to kind of, you know, seal the deal for us. Lots of hoops to watch here over the next few days, but we are focused on football as we finish up here. Wani's winner of the week. We had seven winners we, last week, but only one can be the winner Only of the week. one, and I'll tell you what, Tom Landry, the story coach of, uh, legend coach of the Cowboys, sure. he said one time, Coaching is to motivate your 22 players to do things that they may not feel like doing, but they know and you know they have to do if they want to win. Northwestern gets the award. David Braun and this team, I mean, look, all yes, they're going to a bowl game, but all of a sudden we're talking about Cam Porter running for almost 100 yards. I mean, Cam Johnson, Ben Bryant not throwing interceptions and looking like a really good quarterback out there, and the defense hasn't missed a beat. Tackles for losses, sacks, takeaways. So, I mean, he's really, this football, these players have done a great job of maybe not feeling like doing what they know they have to do, but they have jumped on board, and it, it's a great example of what happens with guys when, they, uh, when, when they're willing to commit to something and the results that you can get at the end of the day. Pretty remarkable story. Again, they Great are bowl story. eligible heading into the game against Illinois. Interesting footnote there. It turns out that win over Purdue will be the last game mm, at the old right. Ryan Field. And there's been some discussion for those who haven't followed it all that closely. They proposed a new stadium about a year ago. In fact, more than a year ago, it finally got approved by the Evanston City Council last night. So they are going to plow down the old stadium, build a new one, they'll need to find somewhere else to play for the next two years. Yes, you know what? The Rolling Stones coming there, I may be there. Yeah, yeah, right. They're, they're going to have six concerts a year. I don't know that they'll get the Rolling Stones. Well, but if they do, I'll go along with you. I'll get, right? the, tic I'll get a, the tickets. It's a deal. All right. Jake Butt, Pat Forty, join me tomorrow, plus Illinois basketball coach Brad Underwood. See you then.